Chapter Eight of Our Little Jewish Cousin. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Denise Nordell. Our Little Jewish Cousin by Mary Hazelton Blanchard Wade. Chapter Eight. The Sweet Singer of Israel. Very well then. Let us go back to the days of long ago, long even before the destruction of our beloved city. Let us seek David on the hillsides, tending his flocks with loving care. One day a visitor came to the house of Jesse, David's father. This visitor was no other than the prophet Samuel. He had received a command from the Lord telling him to take a vial of oil and seek the house of Jesse. There, said the Lord, you will find the new king who is to succeed Saul. Samuel hastened to obey. When he reached Jesse's house, he asked to see his sons. One by one passed before him till the eighth son, David, appeared. Then the voice of the Lord again spoke to Samuel. It said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. As soon as the prophet had anointed David with the oil, the young man was filled with the spirit and power of God. At the same time they left King Saul, who did many foolish and bad deeds after this. But what of David? Did he go out into the world and declare himself the future king of Israel? Not so. He continued to live his peaceful, quiet life as a shepherd. He learned to sing and play upon the harp. He now showed himself indeed the sweet singer of Israel. He began to show power in other ways, too. Many times the fierce lions and savage bears came creeping upon his flocks. Many times David met and overpowered them with the strength given to him by the Lord. It seems as though I can see him guarding his flocks, said Solomon, as Levi stopped talking to rest for a moment. His beautiful black eyes are looking out into the night and watching for danger. He looks at his sleeping sheep to see if all are safe. Then he hears the sound of foes drawing near and springs to meet them. I like best to think of him with a tiny lamb in his arms, said Esther. He holds it lovingly against his breast as though he would say, I will save you from all harm, poor helpless creature. Levi now went on with his story. While David was still tending his flocks, King Saul was waging war upon the Philistines, the bitter enemies of our people. They became more and more daring until at last they gathered on the side of a mountain right here in Israel. Three of David's brothers were fighting in Saul's army and went out to meet the Philistines. David often went to the camp to visit his brothers. He happened to be there once when a Philistine giant marched forth and dared any Israelite to fight with him. There was no one who felt able to say, I am not afraid, I accept your challenge. No one, did I say? At first this was true, for everyone in Saul's army kept silent. But when David saw this, he felt the Spirit of the Lord stir within him. He rose, saying, I will meet you. He was now led before Saul, and there, in the presence of the king, he said he had faith that God would save him from harm, even from the hand of the giant. At first Saul thought, It is of no use for this young shepherd to go out alone to meet the giant. He will only lose his life. But when he heard what David said, he changed his mind. He got out a strong suit of armor and even helped him to put it on. David was not used to such things. The armor weighed him down so that he staggered and almost fell. He said, It would be better for me to carry only such weapons as I know. Let me take my shepherd's staff and the sling I have used so often in meeting the wild beasts. He was allowed to do as he chose. He went forth to meet the giant with nothing to help him save his staff and sling. And what did the giant Goliath say when he saw the young shepherd draw near? He spoke in scornful words, but he suddenly became silent as David sent a stone from his sling that passed through his forehead and entered into his brain. As soon as David saw the success of his shot, he rushed to the giant's side, seized his sword, and cut off his head. The watching Philistines were filled with fear. They began to flee. But Saul's army followed and overtook them and killed great numbers. All Israel now began to praise David. Saul, too, was filled with delight. He declared he was willing David should marry his elder daughter after a while. Now the king, as you know, often did wild and foolish things. This was, perhaps, because he gave way to fits of bad temper. When he learned of David's power to play and sing, he often asked the young shepherd to quiet his angry feelings with the sweet music of his harp and voice. He was very fond of David in those days, but after a while he became jealous when he heard the constant praises of the people. They said, Saul hath slain his thousands, but David his ten thousands. His anger was now turned against the brave shepherd. At one time he threw his spear at David. It was when the lad was playing on his harp. 
but saul failed to do what his wicked heart desired the lord was protecting the future king of israel again he tried to kill david and again he failed saul must have thought that it was of no use so now he sought to injure the young man in a different way he gave the daughter he had promised david to another lover but saul soon found that his younger daughter loved david he now said you may have michal if you will first kill one hundred philistines he only said this because he hoped david would be killed by the enemy i know what david did exclaimed solomon who could keep still no longer he went out and destroyed two hundred philistines instead of one hundred yes said levi and he brought back the spoils and laid them at the feet of saul the king was now obliged to have david for a son-in-law but he hated him as much as ever so he told his son jonathan and some of his attendants to kill him now jonathan as you must know loved david as a brother he did all in his power to make his father feel more kindly toward him he had almost succeeded when saul was seized with a new spirit of madness all his wicked feelings came back and he hired some bad men to take david by surprise when he was asleep and kill him somehow or other michal heard of the plot she warned david and he fled from the palace but michal did not stop here she made the shape of a man and placed it in david's bed in this way the bad men who came to kill him were deceived i am rather tired rebecca said levi when he had got this far in the story won't you go on and tell the children about david's flight certainly said his wife in her sweet clear voice she made a picture of david hiding near ramah but he was not safe for saul heard where he was he sent men there to take him prisoner a strange thing happened on their way they were overcome by the spirit of the lord and they did not dare seize david when saul was told how they had failed he went himself in search of david but he too was overpowered by the spirit of the lord and what do you think happened instead of harming him he asked david to come back to the palace but david did not feel sure that saul was a true friend he thought it would be the wisest thing for him to see jonathan first and ask him to find out how his father really felt jonathan was a true friend it did not take him long to learn that saul was as much an enemy as ever he must now let david know about it and prevent his return to the palace he knew where david was hiding but he did not dare seek him out instead of that he started from the palace to go shooting he took a boy with him when he had come close to the place where his friend was hidden he began to shoot he spoke to the boy from time to time he used such words as to let the listening david know that the king was no more his friend than ever when rebecca had got thus far miriam looked a little perplexed i don't see how david could understand what he meant she said he had agreed with jonathan that certain words should mean certain things my dear oh i see now go on with the story please rebecca smiled pleasantly and went on david prepared to flee at once but he had no arms or food he must have both he went to the house of the high priest when he had entered he told him he had come with a message from the king he asked for the sword of goliath which was in the high priest's keeping he also asked for five sacred loaves of shewbread which no one dared to eat except the priests when these had been given him he hurried away he had one adventure after another it was about this time that he hid in the cave at adullam his brothers and a great many other israelites joined him there while he was hiding in the cave of adullam the prophet of god came to him telling him to go into the land of judah he started at once to obey the prophet's command saul heard where he was and followed him on his way the king heard how david had been helped by the high priest he was so angry that he ordered not only the high priest to be killed but also his eighty-five helpers and all the people of the town in which he lived the son of the high priest managed to escape he fled to david and told him the sad story you can imagine how bad david felt when he learned what had happened through his own deceit but his mind was kept busy with plans to keep out of saul's reach for the king followed him from place to place one night while david was hiding in a cave the king stopped to rest at that very spot little did he dream who was so near him while he lay sleeping david crept to his side and cut off a piece of his cloak he might have killed saul at this time but he had too great a heart the next day just as the king was riding away in his chariot david appeared in the mouth of the cave he held up the piece he had cut from saul's cloak then the king knew he had been in david's power he saw how generously he had been treated he felt such shame that he determined to do the young man no more harm but his heart soon grew wicked again and once more he began to persecute him 
David again showed him how generous he was. He crept into Saul's tent one night. The king's army was encamped all around him. Only a servant went with David on this dangerous trip. No one saw them as they stole along. No one heard them as David stepped to the side of the sleeping Saul and seized his spear and cup. Then away they sped till they reached the hilltop opposite the one where Saul had taken his stand. David now cried out in a loud voice to wake the sleeping army. He showed the cup and spear he had taken away from Saul's tent. Saul saw that David had spared his life a second time. He was again filled with gratitude. But David had learned not to trust him. He sought a home among the Philistines and helped them in their wars. They treated him with great kindness, and their king became his true friend. Not long after this, the Philistines went out to battle against Saul. David was not with them at this time. It was a sad day for the Israelites. They were badly beaten, and Saul's sons were killed. Yes, even David's faithful friend Jonathan lost his life. Saul was overcome with sorrow. He threw himself upon his sword and died by his own hand. When David heard the news, he felt very sad. He mourned bitterly over the death of Jonathan. But this could not be helped now, and there was much work to do for his people. The Israelites were in a pitiful state. The Philistines had most of the country in their power. A leader was needed. That leader was at hand. It was David, the hero, the sweet singer. How just he is, said the people. How brave he is, all cried. Not long after this he was crowned king of Israel. At first he lived in Hebron, but afterward he went to Jerusalem, where a beautiful palace was built for him and his family. And now he went on and became great, for the Lord God of hosts was with him. Rebecca bowed her head as she said these words. Let us chant one of the Psalms of David, said Levi. It is a good way to end our afternoon. Rebecca began the words of the beautiful twenty-third Psalm. The others joined their voices with hers. End of chapter 8 Recording by Denise Nordell of Modesto, California